Let's learn how an array works in JavaScript. Now an array is simply a variable, but internally it's what we call a data structure, meaning there's organization to it, and it's how data is stored inside of memory. Let's go ahead and create a brand new file, and um, I'm going to go ahead and paste in some HTML. I'll leave that there so you can copy that. And then I'm going to save that, and we'll call it uh, ArrayPractice.html. Now, what we can do on an array is we can store data, and like a variable, but instead of just storing one piece of data, we can store multiple pieces of data. Now, what does that really mean? Well. Let's say that we wanted to keep track of a whole bunch of names. And we would have to create a variable for every single name that we wanted to store. And that would be a real pain to do, because what if there were a hundred names? You'd have to go out there and create a hundred different variables. Or what if we didn't know how many names we wanted to store? Then we're in a lot of trouble because we just don't want to go create a hundred variables because we might use them someday and instead only use five of them because now we have a whole bunch of variables we don't use. So what we can do instead is we can create a single variable which allows us to store multiple values. In other words, it's like having a briefcase or, or a filing cabinet. Let's do that. It's like having a filing cabinet drawer. We have one filing cabinet drawer, but when you open it up, you could have multiple pieces of data in that one drawer. And all you'd have to do is access that one drawer and get the information out of it. And it's all organized. It's in order. Because when you open that drawer, there's multiple folders there of information. And the first folder would be at the beginning of the drawer. And the last folder, of course, would be at the end of the drawer. And they would be sequenced in an order one after another. It's also like a bank of mailboxes, like in an apartment complex. Let's say you have a bank of mailboxes and you have, let's say, I'll just drop down to here and we'll just sort of draw a little bit. We'll say we have a big mailbox and we have the first mailbox and then we have the second mailbox and the third mailbox and a fourth mailbox. So that one bank of mailboxes has four pieces of information stored inside of it. But it's all stored in that one mailbox. If I grabbed that mailbox and moved it somewhere, all four of the little mailboxes would go with that one big mailbox. Now, how do you access a mailbox? When the post person comes to the mailbox to put something inside of it, and the post person says, open up the mailbox and put something inside of it, you have to know the position of that mailbox or the address of it. And so you might say, well, let's go to the mailbox first position and put something inside of it. And let's go to the mailbox third position and put something inside of it. So based upon this address for the mailbox, you can store data inside of it. And we call this address an index or a subscript. And the way the addresses work in JavaScript is that they start at zero. So if I wanted to access the first mailbox in that variable mailbox, I would have to say go to address zero for the mailbox. Open it up and put something inside of it. If I wanted to go to the third position, I'd say go to position two. Now even though you might think that's the second one, remember the address starts at zero, one, two, three. So really position two, or number two, is the third mailbox. What if you wanted to print something out? Alert, mailbox, and let's say you wanted to do the last position. Well, we know that that was position three. 
and that would access the contents of that mailbox. Now remember, mailbox is just a variable, and that variable is an array. So the array allows us to store multiple values in one variable. So how do we do this in JavaScript? And you see the advantages then. Because now all the data is in one variable, I don't have to worry about a gazillion variables or creating a bunch of variables. All I have to do is create one variable. So how do we do that? Well, within our script tag in the HTML, we could create a variable, var, and we can give it a variable name. I like to use Hungarian notation. A for array, S for string, and then uh, names is the actual variable that I'm going to work with. Now I could hard code the contents of that array by saying square bracket Mickey Minnie and Donald and this says create a variable called AS names and go make it or assign it square bracket an array Notice we have an opening square bracket and a closing square bracket. Make it an array, and let's make it three long. And in position zero, Mickey. Position one, Minnie. Position two, Donald. If I wanted to print that out and print off Mickey, I could say as names, the variable name, square bracket, and whatever element or address I want to work with. So that should say, go print off the contents of the array, but only grab mailbox zero. Now, if you wanted to grab more than one mailbox, you're either going to have to concatenate them, or maybe you could do something different. But let's go ahead and try this first and see if we go ahead and see the contents of the array and do position zero, which is Mickey. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my Go Live. Remember, if you haven't used Go Live before, go look at the other video, see how to install it. And let's go ahead and run that. So when I ran that with Go Live and had the correct work folder, it prints off Mickey. So that seems to work for us. It grabs the first element. Now this is something that's different in JavaScript than other languages. What if I just said, go print off the array. What do you think would happen there? Let's go ahead and uh, run that with our go live and notice what it prints. It prints off all the positions of the array and it separates each value with a comma. Well does it use the comma because it knows that Mickey, Donald, and Minnie are strings? Well let's try this. Instead of AS names let's change it to be AS numbers and in AS numbers let's go and enter 5, 4, and 7 and then let's print off AI numbers and let's save that and let's run it one more time. Now this time we have an array of integers rather than array of string. Let's see if it still prints the whole array and separates them with commas. And it does. So in other words, it doesn't really care what type of value is inside of it. What if I did this? What if I said 5 and I said spanky and then 7? So this is an array that has an int, a string, and an int. Now a lot of other languages won't, won't allow you to get away, away with this in an array. So let's see if we can do that in JavaScript. And JavaScript, being a loosely typed, loosely typed language, says, I don't care what you put in the array. That array is not strongly typed, so it doesn't all have to be the same data type. That's good and bad. The good part is that it's very flexible. The bad part, very flexible. So what if we did this now? Instead of actually hard coding the length of the array, what if I just said, let's just create an array with no elements, and then if I said AI numbers equals 5, and actually let's give it a position. We'll say AI numbers 0, and then let's go ahead and alert AI 0. Let's see what happens. 
we're starting off with an empty array. That's an empty array. There are no mailboxes made. And then here we just said, hey, go to the first mailbox, even though it's not there, put the number 5 in it, and now go print it out. Let's see what would happen if we try to run that. And JavaScript says, sure, that's fine. You want to go add an element there? No problem at all. But you have to specify the location of it. I could come in here and say AI numbers bracket 2 equals 3. Now in this case, there's position 0. We made a brand new mailbox, put a value in it. And then we skipped address 1 and said go put something in the third position, which is number 2. In fact, let's do this just to avoid any confusion. Let's go to the third position because it's 0, 1, 2. Put a 7 in it. And let's print off that whole array and just see what it does now. Let's go ahead and run that with Go Live. And it prints off a 5, a nothing, and a 7. So the interesting thing there is that we didn't say there's a position 1, but JavaScript now thinks there is, and it just left it empty. Other languages, that would cause an error. So you start off with an empty array and then you can just start adding values but or adding mailboxes adding elements but to do so you have to know the subscript or the index of where you want to store that data the other thing we could do with an array is an array has a value on it called length and let's see what length does for us and let's go add another item here we'll say AI numbers bracket 1 is equal to 12 so I made three elements in that array, and let's go and print off the array's length. Let's see what prints. And it says the array's length is three. In other words, there's three elements, three mailboxes for that array. Well, how can we now use the length of an array and access data? I want to go and look at every element of the array and print it off. For every element of the array I want to print it. Here's how you could do it. I'm going to go ahead and create a variable and then I'm going to use my for loop and say let's start I count at zero and as long as I count is less than the array length. I count plus plus alert AI numbers square bracket and now remember in the square bracket what do you put you put the address of the element you want to print well the first time through I want to print off element 0 then element 1 then element 2 so what could I put inside that bracket I need some variable that starts at 0 that goes to 1 and goes to 2 our variable I count starts at 0 is 0 less than the length of the array, which is 3? Yes. Drop into here and print off the array I count, which says 0. So it prints off that value. Then it increments I count to 1. Is 1 less than 3? Yes. Print off position 1. Increment to 2. Is 2 less than 3? Yes. Print off what's ever in position 2. Increment to 3. Is 3 less than 3? No, it's not. So go ahead and get out of the for loop. And this is a way you can print off every element of a for loop. Let's see if it works. So it's going to do the for loop and access position 0, which has a 5 in it, 12, which is in position 1, 7 in position 3. We're now done with the whole length of the array. So we get out of the loop. And that's how you can print off every element inside of an array. Now what else could we do? In this situation, you have to know the size or the position of where to store the data. And you can get away with putting empty values and skipping positions. Not recommended at all. In the next video, we'll learn how to dynamically add an element to the array, how to make a new mailbox, and not even care about what position it is. We just tell Java, add the new element. 
So we'll go ahead and continue with this program in the next video.